do collect uh, dissertations uh, systematically. We do that, uh, and uh, we even uh, uh, address them as a virtual collection within the catalog. But I know libraries can uh, not even always uh, easily distinguish between uh, those uh, dissertations that are published at the university and those that are published at the other universities in their catalog. But of course, uh, now we have the repository. So uh, one could ask, uh, I would want to search this repository to find everything our university has ever published. Well, this is a relative new thing they are answering. We are doing that uh, since 1993, which is, uh, which is not uh, too bad. Uh, but um, but uh, to be honest, we are only, uh, we are only doing this, uh, this uh, uh, systematically since uh, 2003. And I know that uh, even at this very moment, university libraries do not have a complete picture of their, uh, of their university's output because they leave it up to research staff what to put in there and what not to register. In Wageningen, we, uh, the, the library uh, does take care of the, of the repository itself and is responsible for the contents of the repository. So uh, people can even ask, start asking more difficult questions like, uh, what are the most highly cited journal articles in the repository? Well, that is way off uh, what we uh, usually uh, metadata, or the, the metadata we usually uh, gather in, in Mark 21 and Dublin Core. And I think libraries should be able to answer all of these kind of questions. But to be able to do so, we have some needs. We need better coverage of uh, local output. And we should care about the metadata of local output as a library. We also need more and better uh, local metadata. And um, metadata that we only we can provide as a, as, a, as a local organization. And we should get rid of the mat metadata silos that we have built by using separate systems for library catalogs, digital asset management systems, and institutional repositories. For the better coverage of local output, uh, I would first like to brag about the, the coverage of our repository. We're doing pretty well. Uh, as you can see in this slide, um, we are uh, one of the two smallest universities in the Netherlands, and still we are the largest, uh, the largest, uh, con um, we have the largest repository. As you see, this, this, is a, this is an interface of Narsis, which is the Dutch uh, aggregation of uh, repositories. And the facet on the left side, you can see that we are, have the biggest contributors in, in Narcis. Uh, on this slide, which is uh, uh, about the, the uh, show also shows the facets for the output and open access. You can see that it's even more true for, for open access uh, publications. And this is not uh, because Wageningen Research Staff is more productive, uh, and certainly not because Wageningen UR staff is uh, heavily involved in the open access movement. This is mostly because the university library cares about registering metadata of all publications. Uh, we do care because we know the repository is seen as a wonderful asset uh, to uh, the university because you can do things with this metadata. Things you can only do if the coverage is excellent. Only then you can use it for uh, things like publication overviews, citation analysis, or bibliometric reporting. So libraries should care. Libra libraries should not leave metadata registration of local output to be done by goodwilling researchers themselves. Traditionally, libraries has in have, invented, have invested a lot in registering metadata of uh, books they have acquired. but. Um, we have to understand that local output makes our library different from others, and we should feel responsible for this work. And if you think you can easily collect the, that metadata using the tooling that modern uh, current research information systems are providing, like extracting metadata from existing li uh, bibliographies, you're really wrong. Uh, if you look at this graph, you can see that, um, that we are uh, 
the, the, the green, the green uh, dots are what's in our repository, and the blue is Scopus, and the red is the Web of Science. And you can see that the coverage of local output of scientific journal articles is only slightly better in the repository compared to what you may extract from uh, Scopus or Web of Science. And we are a life sciences university, as I already mentioned, so Scopus and Web of Science should, uh, should cover our research uh, quite well. Uh, by the way, uh, you see a small dip around the year 2000. Uh, this is not the millennium bug. Uh, this is a period in time when uh, management found it very necessary to reorganize Wageningen University and Research Center. So it took away all uh, efforts uh, uh, from, from publishing uh, to, uh, to reorganizing, but we are recovering from that. But what I uh, show on this slide, you can see that the, the now we have, uh, the, this is the complete the, the purple line is complete uh, the complete uh, output of the of the repository. And you can see that it's way more than just what is covered by Web of Science and and uh, and uh, Scopus. So you still have to do a lot of metadata registration yourself if you want to be complete. And. Uh, I think the library should care about this. They should, they should, they should, they should disclose this information to the world. Uh, libraries have the skills to do this, and nobody will do this for you. And again, you can see that the Malayan dip in this uh, purple graph as well. Um, my third plea is for more and better local metadata. Should we able to do nice things? Uh, with all of this data, you will need more and better local metadata. For example, you need correct and unique author identifiers. To produce, to produce these kind of overviews, you know, have to know exactly who is, who is the author of an article, and not just his name, but his identifier. We uh, currently add all the uh, metadata registrations with the so-called Dutch NTA number. There's a Dutch uh, a National Thesaurus of Authors. And we use a new, new number for all for all this uh, all this new output, and we just finished a small interface uh, to be able to uh, allow librarians to add this uh, this information to all the publications, to find them and to match them with uh, exist with publications by the same author, which are newer, to find out whether they are of the same author and uh, add these numbers uh, uh, respectively. Since we know the relation between uh, the NTA number and, uh, for example, the, the local user account, uh, and because of the service-oriented architecture of the Wageningen IT landscape, it's also easy then to, to provide information from other systems to web services into these, uh, these overviews, like uh, the person's picture, some personal information, and the link to the personal uh, page of the author. We can even provide the author with uh, specific uh, personal views on the repository to, uh, to scan only his own publications. Oh, because the library uh, has shown that they care about this local metadata, and they are now also have become uh, uh, the coordinator, and have got the responsibility of the directory of people. So we're not only cataloging books, but we all make sure that the catalog of people is correct as well. And um, there's another thing going on with other IDs you want to have correct in a repository, and that is the uh, identifiers for organizational uh, units. To do this uh, kind of overviews, not per author, but per organizational unit, you also need the identifiers for those. And this is uh, extremely tricky. Departments, they tend to change all the time. As you can see in this slide, the Research Institute for Animal Husbandry was named like this from uh, 2001 until 2004. And then it joined the uh, Animal Sciences Group. Um, and but that's only until 2011 when this was split up in between uh, the, the Central Veterinary Institute and Wageningen UR Livestock Research. So if you want a complete overview of an organizational department, you have to, you have to show that there, there are predecessors and, uh, and uh, let people decide whether they want to uh, incorporate the, those uh, predecessors in their overviews too. 
So what turned out is that nobody, nobody uh, at the university uh, records this uh, kind of information in a structural way. And the library took its uh, responsibility again and, they, uh, and we have uh, developed the organization manager in which we uh, manage the authority file of, uh, for identifiers uh, of uh, organizational units within the, uh, within the university. Uh, we provide this information also as a web service to other systems at the university. Um, as you may have seen, uh, we also provide functionality in these overviews like, uh, like average scores in impact, uh, in impact factor journals and scores in so-called journal quartiles. Uh, this, for this, we have to add extra metadata to our catalog and repository, like citation scores, impact factors, etc. Uh, or this is a part of, a, of, a, of, a, of an XML uh, uh, snippet of our, our catalog, of a catalog record in which you can see, or, or re this is in fact the repository record, in which you can see this uh, added information. Uh, I hope to show you some other usage of this data, which is, some is added to the catalog in, uh, in a lightning talk this week. But that's something we open also do, so better local metadata. Uh, by imp by importing stuff from from uh, from this case uh, ISI about uh, about impact factors and citation scores. Uh, the last uh, part of my presentation is about the need to get rid of uh, metadata silos. Uh, libraries have a good tradition of registering publications more or less the same way, according to internationally accepted rules. And there's a lot to say about the way uh, we do this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that some of uh, uh, some other speakers will, will will get back on that uh, this week, as ever, as always. But I'm sure. Uh, but at least we have some common grounds in uh, in, in in the way we do this. Um, however, we are not only doing this uh, the same way, more or less, but we're also doing this for the same publications, which sounds a bit. Uh, unnecessary. Um, we hope cloud-based cloud library systems and central indexes will allow us to do this more efficiently so we can free up time at libraries to uh, invest in specific local metadata which is not uh, entered by others. Um, our uh, traditional library systems uh, do not accommodate for this. Uh, uh, some current research information systems provide tools to uh, this information to, uh, to, um, to records. Uh, but those systems are strangely not, not taken over by library system vendors, but they are taken over by big publishers. Well, again, uh, as I said, uh, the information, the local information is not, is not, uh, is not uh, registered by qualified librarians at the moment. We are doing this in Wageningen. We're trying to, 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 to to get this all this 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 work to the university, instead li of leaving it up to research staff, um, still we end up uh, with two complete registrations uh, in, in in a repository and in, in a catalog record. Uh, as we um, as we can see on this, uh, this is this is this is our own uh, environment. Uh, on the, on the top, you can see the library catalog record for a dissertation. And um, you see that there's a specific extra uh, metadata in the in the catalog, like uh, like keywords and category goats and, and notes. Uh, you may also find the same book in in, in the in the re in the repository, and there is more information about the research project, the organizational unit responsible. And you can also see the same information entered differently. For example, different com different publication types. It says a scientific book in a repository while the catalog is just saying a uh, monograph. I also checked uh, the Aleph catalog of our wonderful host uh, this year for a local publication. And as you can see, uh, this one is recorded in Aleph and it says uh, there's no full text available for this item. However, the same, the same 162 page book is uh, recorded in the repository. And it doesn't only have an abstract here and information on the organization unit responsible for the publication, but also has a link to the full text. Uh, fortunately, Gens uh, Solar 
powered Mirkov indexes uh, both uh, both data stores, so you still find uh, both uh, both descriptions, and uh, you can see that there's a full text link in the one from the repository. Uh, indexes that cover uh, multiple data stores also help you to find uh, local publications twice in other in other uh, systems. Like for example, this is the Primo index uh, for the University of Amsterdam. You will find a record of a local publication with uh, rich metadata in their Aleph catalog, and the record from the from the repository on top is, is is quite poor, but it does have a link to the full text. Uh, one other thing is that the one from the repository is characterized as a dissertation, and uh, the other one uh, is not. It's just a book, and the fact that it's a dissertation, you have to read from the note, which says "proofschrift" in Dutch, meaning dissertation. So it's this press information is is hidden in a note. Another example is the in the Primo Index of uh, Leiden University. The same thing, a rich uh, cat elf record without a link and uh, and a repository uh, with a link to the resource. The last uh, example is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is from MIT libraries, a book in, the, in their cat library catalog and the same thing in their uh, DSpace uh, repository. As I stated, we are starting a program to get rid of these uh, metadata silos in Wageningen. Uh, we are, aim are aiming to have one uh, metadata description for each publication. Uh, we will try to use exis existing dis descriptions from uh, library, uh, cloud-based uh, uh, library uh, systems, but if they are not available, we will uh, produce the metadata once in our own system, um, or in the central system, sorry, so others can use it as well. And we uh, we will produce uh, local metadata uh, and, and link it to the uh, to the central uh, metadata registration of metadata we all uh, register. Uh, we have also started a project uh, named the Wageningen Bibliography, which uh, where we try to identify all the publications in our library catalog and uh, identify them as Wageningen UR output. We try to add identifiers for mostly former organizational units. Uh, it's, uh, we found out that it's too hard to, to identify individual uh, authors as former Wageningen UR staff. So uh, we, have, we cannot do that, unfortunately. Um, the project also aims to digitize the, the local output as much as possible. We, for example, recently digitized all uh, inaugural speeches and farewell addresses of all Wagen UR professors dating back to the first one in, in 1913. And uh, before that, we, uh, we uh, digitized all Wagen dissertations dating back to the first one in uh, 1920. And for those that righteously say, uh, uh, go where your users are, I first would like to commend that uh, uh, recent, recent statistics, at, at this moment we have changed uh, our web environment at the university, so that we are uh, all web pages of the university are in win one big uh, uh, realm. So we can uh, now we can see that one third of all the internal visits of web pages at the university are library web pages. So still people are coming to the library website. But uh, having said that, uh, we uh, we make sure that not only we do not only expose our carefully registered metadata only to those who are so kind to visit our website. Uh, we put effort in getting all the meta metadata descriptions indexed by Google. Um, just about all our records in the catalog and, and repository can be found in Google. It's, what it's a little harder to get them in Google Scholar, but in Google it's quite easy. As you can see in the slide, uh, there's about two million. Well, you never trust to have trust that, uh, that number in, in Google, but about two million uh, catalog and, and repository records indexed by Google. The same goes for all uh, digitized uh, PDFs stored in, uh, stored in uh, what we call our electronic depot. These are also completely covered by Google. This is about 124,000 results. And these cover just about all uh, publications in open access in our, uh, in our electronic depot. So uh, I hope all this uh, it helps us to change from an outside in library which is gathering uh, input to uh, provide to your 
to your local per people into an, an, an inside-out library which is exposing the work your people at your university are doing. Thank you.